Hi, I'm Peter Petrino, and I'm here in the television studio at, Ho at Hopewell Valley Central High School with Juan Del Castillo. Juan is a correctional facility officer, but in his spare time, a musician. He plays the saxophone and piano. He is in multiple bands. He has two children that attend Hopewell Valley Central High School. He attended Notre Dame High School in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. He grew up in a, in a home in Ewing, New Jersey. His parents came to America from Cuba in 1961. Hi, Juan. Hi, Peter. What inspired you to become a musician? Well, when I was a child, uh, my siblings were all musicians. My sister played the piano mostly. My uh, older brother played guitar and sang. My sister also sang. Uh, they both sang well. Uh, my little brother played trumpet. I started off as a drummer back then. Um, so we were kind of sometimes a family band. We sometimes played together, uh, or sometimes a couple of us. And uh, we had neighbors that played also, and we would. We were like the Partridge family or something. Nice. We were, it was fun. It was silly, but it was fun. Nice. Yeah. How did you learn how to play these instruments? Uh, for many of the instruments, I took lessons, but um, some of them I, I'm more self-taught. Uh, when I, I started off as a drummer because as a kid, being a drummer was like macho and cool, and uh, they, you know, sometimes they make fun of people that play <laughs> instruments, calling you a sissy, etc. <laughs> so that's how I started as a drummer. But then when I got to high school. Uh, People also pick on you for being a drummer. They call you a dumber because you don't really know how to read music and do things like that. So I started playing the piano and I took some piano lessons. But when I got to college, I joined the, uh, the jazz band and there were two or, two or three other drummers and two or three other pianists and uh, they needed the saxophonist. So I said, I'll learn to play saxophone. I raised my hand and volunteered. And I taught myself basically this, to play the saxophone at the beginning, and then I've, I've gone on to take some lessons. Nice. Tell me about the bands you're in. I'm in three bands for the most part. Um, one is uh, called The Brew, and we play at John and Peter's a lot. We just played Thursday there, at, uh, and okay. they've been there for years. I joined them in June, uh, but they've been playing there for years. And it's a, a, a power jazz band with a great rhythm and uh, a lot of poetry. So, so we'll do uh, a song, we'll play uh, melodies, and then the leader of the band will recite a poem. Some of it, much of it is, uh, is his own poetry. Sometimes it's uh, Jack Kerouac or, or another famous poet. Um, so that's the brew. And then um, I'm in a, a band which is interesting, and it's a, it's a rock band. It, what's interesting about it for me is that it's young people. Uh, the leader of the band and the lead singer, uh, to, they're a couple. Uh, the, the, the girl is only 20 years old, she, she became 22 weeks ago, and uh, the guy is 20 years old, he'll be 21 uh, sometime next year. Uh, so I'm there with, with young people, mm -hmm. but the bass player is almost my age, he's 44 years old or so, and uh, so, so it's a nice mix of, of, of youth and experience. Nice. And then, uh, how, how did I forget this band? I'm in a band called Sensei Juan and the Black Belts. Mm -hmm. I'm Sensei Juan. <laughs> uh, Many of the guys in Sensei Juan and, and the Black Belt are also in the brew, uh, but I'm in charge then. So we play my originals, we play um, a lot of jazz songs, but we play them with a Latin feel. So, so while the brew is a jazz band, Sensei Juan and the Black Belt is a Latin jazz band. Uh, so we play jazz songs with a Latin f feel. Uh, I do my poetry, uh, my original songs, and I sometimes sing, and I'm not a good singer, <laughs> but since I am a sensei, people don't mess with me too much, <laughs> and uh, they let me get away with singing. Nice. Do you uh, make money playing music? Uh, no. no. <laughs> not really. Uh, occasionally, I'll get maybe $20 to $50 for, for a gig. I spend $50 on reeds. Right. So, uh, no, it, it doesn't... I don't make money. Is there money to be made? Yes, if you want to play what people tell you to play. But if you want to be original, uh, you have to go out and find an audience, and, right. and it's, it's hard to make money. Uh, I don't make money, and that's why it's good that I'm a correction officer. I have a, a good, steady paycheck uh, with my day job, and it doesn't really interfere with my, uh, with my music. And uh, so I don't make money. But luckily, I have a good, steady job. Nice. What venues have you played? Um, like I just mentioned, John and Peters uh, in New Hope. I just played the Mercer Oaks Country Club uh, as, with Sensei Juan of the Black Belts. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. That was a nice gig. I played uh, a few bars in the area with, uh, with Radio Fiction, the rock band. 
Pete's Steakhouse, um, BT Bistro, which is on Route 1 in Princeton. So we'll play all the places between Princeton and New Hope, uh, maybe going down a little bit into Philly. We're looking at a, a gig in Manhattan uh, at a place called the Bowery Poetry Club. Mm -hmm. So they, they do poetry and music, and since our bands, both, both. two of my bands are, are bands that combine poetry and music, but they don't pay anything. You pay the door, and it costs so much to get to Manhattan to, to bring you know our oh, instruments stuff. and our people. Yeah. So uh, that's. Uh, but I'm 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 going to do it even if I had to pay out of pocket mm -hmm. to play there because nice. I just want to play in Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, who are some of your musical influences? Um, I have a lot of musical influences. Uh, of course, being Cuban, I have some Cuban influences that you probably never heard of, but uh, a lot of the old. Cuban guys from from the 40s uh, and 50s and 60s, uh, Benny More, um, uh, Com Compay Segundo, uh, Machito. Machito is probably my biggest one. And then a new guy that he might become famous like now, even as a crossover. He's he's famous in the Latin community, but I think some of his stuff might might cross into uh, into mainstream. His name is Equis Alfonso, X Alfonso. And then in, uh, in music in English, uh, right off the top, these are real easy. My three big ones, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, I'm mm -hmm. a Pink Floyd fanatic, love them. Uh, Steely Dan and uh, a band called Morphine, which is not so well known, but a uh, great band with the greatest saxophonist. His name is Dana Coley. They're from, uh, from the Boston area. Right. When you write songs, do you write the music or lyrics first? Ah, writing songs. I don't know if I ever have done it the same way twice. A lot of times uh, it's lyrics, a lot of times it's music. I play a lot of instruments, like I mostly play the, the piano and the saxophone, but sometimes I'll play bass or guitar, and that way I can write songs in a different way, just approaching it from a different instrument. Um, so sometimes it's the saxophone, sometimes it's the bass, sometimes it's the piano, sometimes it's the guitar, sometimes it's lyrics. Now, another thing that I do that, uh, how I've wound up writing a lot of songs is either hiking or bicycling. So I'll be riding a bicycle and I get into a rhythm and then words start to come to me or melody starts to come to me. Uh, and uh, it's great. So if you are interested in writing songs, mm -hmm. I suggest to be physical, do something physical like hiking and, and bicycling rowing on a rowing machine. Don't wear, don't wear an iPod. You, you'll be thinking somebody else's music. Yeah. You can get into your own music. Another thing I do is sometimes, uh, one of my favorite songs that, I, that I've written is called Water, and it's a very long song, and I'm going to play a, a piece of it. And it started off as I'm working on an exercise of, of practicing my thirds, uh, ascending in, thir in thirds, and I started thinking of how it that I have to make it flow. So I'm thinking about flowing, and then I'm drinking lots of water. <laughs> and I thought about water. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll play a little bit of that sure. for you. And the thing is, when you're uh, playing exercises, to play them and not make them sound like exercises, try to make them sound like music. Right. And to me, this exercise of playing thirds sounded like music. Or at least I hope I, it sounds like music. <laughs> Uh, I'm only going to play a, a couple sections of it, and it ha actually has two poems and a, vocal, uh, a singing part, which I won't do because I don't have any accompaniment. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.